in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Stand in the place of prayer and stretch our capacity in the spirit until something notable comes upon us this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe that every one of us, especially for those who might be here for the first time, have come with all kinds of challenges and we are trusting God to help us. God is not a man that he should lie. Listen. That is not working for you does not mean it cannot work. Every door can open when you have the key. It will not open when you want it to open. It will open when you possess the key. Desire is not enough to bring results in the spirit. You need the keys. So I want us to pay attention don't allow the limitation of the flesh. This is a very prophetic moment we're entering. Can you help me with strength, please? Don't allow your flesh to limit you from receiving the fullness of that which God has for you. Hallelujah. When the man of God came to lead worship, one of the songs that blessed me so much was the song, Sunan Sayesu. For me, it was such a revelation. Such a revelation. For his name is greater, mightier. There are age-long captivities that must give up on your destiny this morning. I guarantee you. I'm aware that there are people who have come here with life and death situations. But there is a name. Hallelujah. There is a name. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe He is mighty. I believe He is able. There are no limits to Him except the ones we create. And listen, please. If you can stretch your spirit tonight, believe me, something will come upon your life that will last you a lifetime. You do not know the amount of prayer and communications with the spirit and the heavens that went in for this meeting. No matter how far you are seated, inside or outside, the presence of God is here. So I want you to take it serious. I want you to open up your heart. Hallelujah. Because God is mighty. He said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. There is a way you have labored and done all you know to do. That you have done all you know to do does not mean that is all there is to do. It's what you know to do. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you possess those keys, you will rule even in the midst of your enemies. I want to exhort us very briefly. And then we'll storm the gates of darkness. For everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost is being returned unto me. 
Everything that was stolen. Prophesy one time to yourself that everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. Speak to the atmosphere. Everything that was lost shall be returned. It's a prophecy, it's not a song. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. One more time from the depth of your heart. your voice in one minute and say speak to me oh God open my eyes open my eyes are you praying Ambreto ko soto barata balada balaka ta prada kaska prati ala bakasia Shekete pros kate ban de brasela bariada balada dada I tell you the presence of God is mighty in this place Holy 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 Oh! 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those outside, can you shout a resounding hallelujah? Let every devil know you are alive and doing well and you insist that that which belongs to you must come to you. Shout one more time, hallelujah. I want to share with us a spiritual secret tonight and then we will pray. I want to share with us very briefly the secret of spiritual power. Please, I want you to pay attention. There is no man who wants to make a mark in the sands of time. There is no man living in the 21st century who wants to make any notable mark in the spirit. Who will ignore the place of power? There are so many believers who are zealous. So many believers want to become all that God has destined them to be. They have desire. They are sincere. They may even have faith. But they lack spiritual power. Hallelujah. What you will be learning very briefly and then we'll pray is supposed to empower you. Listen, a point must come in the life of a man when you will have an encounter with power. This realm that we live in is a realm that is compelled by power. It's not compelled by desire. It's not just compelled by sincerity. It's compelled by power. Psalm 63. The psalmist began to cry and communicate something. Psalm 63. Are we there? Oh God. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul for you my flesh longs for you in a dry and weary land where no water is and this is why I seek for you verse 2 it says to see thy power and thy glory reproduced in my life the same way I saw it in the sanctuary it's not enough to see power in the church and on crusade grounds. Lord, I want that spiritual reality to be at work in my life. Years ago, when I sensed the call of God upon my life, please listen. I began to study books and study men and women. I studied large churches and ministries. And I found out as I studied that there were so many people who were powerless and could not do much. And when God began to describe to me the kind of ministry and the dimensions that he would want me to walk in, I knew that I would have to spend time with God until I taught something genuine. Otherwise, I would have to join the band of people misleading and deceiving themselves and other people speaking with no results and then i began a journey exploring spiritual power i began to study the lives of men and women who had been used mightily unfortunately i did not find many of them that were models enough i began to study the generals i began to study the apostles elijah Hallelujah. And in the course of my journey, for me it was a matter of life and death. It was not just for my name. I knew that I would confront sick people. I knew that I would confront oppressed people. I knew that it would take power for any kind of increase in ministry. Spiritually, numerically and otherwise. I knew posters would only do so much. I knew English would only do so much. And I made up my mind 
that I have no message for God's people until I have the power to prove it. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing. This is an exhortation. I want to stir up your heart. I watch in sincere grief as I see a lot of men of God and people who want to be used by God with so much zeal, so much English, but no power. And then a few who have taught what they believe to be power convince themselves that because they touched someone and you fell down. Why do you need spiritual power? I'll tell you. Pastor Alpha and Manasseh shared it very powerfully. There are giants on every mountain. Please pay attention. This city has gates. That you are here is a sign of dominion. It's not a sign of the absence of darkness. It's a sign of the prevailing power of God over them. There are many lives here that have been buffeted by darkness. I talk to people all the time and I minister, I minister all the time. And I watch with shock the way Satan prevails cheaply over the lives of people. There are doors that will never open until power opens them. When Moses went to Pharaoh, there was very little conversation. When the conversations were done, it was an encounter of power. Are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? And then I began to pray. I remember when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He never spoke a word to me. But he transferred power. Never spoke one word. But something left him and entered my spirit. He said, the entrance of your word giveth light. And understanding unto the simple. I remember when I began to see the miracles and the hand of God. Then I began to see other issues that I could not contend with in the lives of people. And I knew that I had to go back. And that was when I learned that you must consistently contend for spiritual power. Let me tell you something. There is too much noise in the church because there is little power. You will always have to explain and explain and explain. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. He says, but I came to you in the demonstration of the spirit power. That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Tonight, I want to guide us through a few secrets my personal spiritual journey I promise you that if you pay attention to this little exhortation you will encounter power Jacob was a man who met with the Lord and he held on to him he said I will not let you go it was an encounter with power he said leave me for the day break it he said no way I said what is your name he said my name is Jacob a cheat and a supplanter it says from now henceforth your name is changed to Israel for as a prince you have fought with God you have contended with God and prevailed a time must come in a man's life when you will be tired of the level you are and cry in desperation Lord I need your power and your glory in my life there are gates many of us come from all kinds of regions hear me your personal salvation does not deliver your territory. The gates are still there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are giants on every mountain. The Bible says, How terrible art thou in your works? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I remember Bishop Oyedeko sharing one time and he said how that the church was not growing. They were fasting. They were praying and doing all they knew to do. And it was not growing. And then one time 
while they gathered with the brethren and they were angry at the situation he said the lord asked him to come out and when he stepped out he saw a dark cloud and he said this is the cloud that makes people to misunderstand your ministry and he commanded the cloud to roll away and there was an explosion let me tell you something time does not change anything it is power that brings change time only reveals it does not change for 38 years the man was sitting at bethesda but when the power of god came upon his life it is power that can give you audacity to be able to bring heaven to bear to be able to bring the realities of the realm of the spirit here and now it takes there is that which is able to create a supply for your every need the word of god and the spirit of truth the holy spirit who helps us represent god's fullness on earth in true intimacy partnership and fellowship with him be a part of this and join us as the servant of God, Apostle Joshua Stelman, brings to you the word of God with simplicity and power. just times of sitting and sleeping there are times of intense worship and prayer the kind of prayer that strikes a chord in the realm of the spirit hallelujah and there are so many people inside and outside different overflows is our intention to make this night a fruitful one hallelujah when the men of god were leading the prayer they were bringing different aspects of spiritual reality i'm just going to be exhorting us briefly and then we'll trust god to stand in the place of prayer and stretch our capacity in the spirit until something notable comes upon us this morning hallelujah listen i believe that every one of us especially for those who might be here for the first time have come with all kinds of challenges and we are trusting God to help us God is not a man that he should lie listen that is not working for you does not mean it cannot work every door can open when you have the key it will not open when you want it to open it will open when you possess the key desire is not enough to bring results in the spirit you need the keys so i want us to pay attention don't allow the limitation of the flesh this is a very prophetic moment we're entering can you help me with strength please don't allow your flesh to limit you from receiving the fullness of that which God has for you. Hallelujah. When the man of God came to lead worship, one of the songs that blessed me so much was the song, Sunan Sa Yesu. For me, it was such a revelation. Such a revelation. For his name is greater, mightier. There are age-long captivities that must give up on your destiny this morning I guarantee you yes. I'm aware that there are people who have come here with life and death situations but there is a name hallelujah there is a name I'm a believer I believe in God I believe he's mighty 
I believe he is able. There are no limits to him except the ones we create. And listen, please. If you can stretch your spirit tonight, believe me, something will come upon your life that will last you a lifetime. You do not know the amount of prayer and communications with the spirit and the heavens that went in for this meeting. No matter how far you are seated, inside or outside, the presence of God is here. So I want you to take it serious. I want you to open up your heart. Hallelujah. Because God is mine. said I will pour water upon him that is thirsty there is a way you have labored and done all you know to do that you have done all you know to do does not mean that is all there is to do is what you know to do it says and I will give you the keys of the kingdom when you possess those keys you will rule even in the midst of your enemies I want to exhort us very briefly And then we'll storm the gates of darkness. For everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost is being returned unto me everything that was stolen prophesy one time to yourself that everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen The atmosphere everything that was lost shall be returned shall be returned unto me is a prophecy it's not a song One more time from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Speak to me, O God. Open my eyes. Are you praying? Are you praying? I tell you, the presence of God is mighty in this place. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Mighty, mighty. Zion's king, 
Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Let me sing you ready. Can you shout a resounding hallelujah? Let every devil know you are alive and doing well and you insist that that which belongs to you must come to you. Shout one more time hallelujah. I want to share with us a spiritual secret tonight and then we will pray. I want to share with us very briefly the secret of spiritual power. Please, I want you to pay attention. There is no man who wants to make a mark in the sands of time. There is no man living in the 21st century who wants to make any notable mark in the spirit. Who will ignore the place of power. There are so many believers who are zealous. So many believers want to become all that God has destined them to be. They have desire. They are sincere. They may even have faith. But they lack spiritual power. Hallelujah. What you will be learning very briefly and then we'll pray. is supposed to empower you. Listen. A point must come in the life of a man when you will have an encounter with power. This realm that we live in is a realm that is compelled by power. It's not compelled by desire. It's not just compelled by sincerity. It's compelled by power. Psalm 63. The psalmist began to cry and communicate something. 
Psalm 63. Are we there? Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul tasted for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and weary land where no water is. And this is why I seek for you. Verse 2. He says to see thy power and thy glory reproduced in my life the same way I saw it in the sanctuary. It's not enough to see power in the church and on crusade grounds. Lord, I want that spiritual reality to be at work in my life. Years ago, when I sensed the call of God upon my life, please listen. I began to study books and study men and women. I studied large churches and ministries. And I found out as I studied that there were so many people who were powerless and could not do much. And when God began to describe to me the kind of ministry and the dimensions that he would want me to walk in, I knew that I would have to spend time with God until I taught something genuine. Otherwise, I would have to join the band of people misleading and deceiving themselves and other people, speaking with no results. And then, I began a journey exploring spiritual power. I began to study the lives of men and women who had been used mightily Unfortunately, I did not find many of them that were models enough. I began to study the generals. I began to study the apostles, Elijah. Hallelujah. And in the course of my journey, for me, it was a matter of life and death. It was not just for my name. I knew that I would confront sick people. I knew that I would confront oppressed people. I knew that it would take power for any kind of increase in ministry. Spiritually, numerically, and otherwise. I knew posters would only do so much. I knew English would only do so much. And I made up my mind that I have no message for God's people until I have the power to prove it. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing. This is an exhortation. I want to stir up your heart. I watch in sincere grief as I see a lot of men of God and people who want to be used by God with so much zeal, so much English, but no power. And then a few who have taught what they believe to be power convince themselves that because they taught someone and he fell down. Why do you need spiritual power? I'll tell you. Pastor Alpha and Manasseh shared it very powerfully. There are giants on every mountain. Please pay attention. This city has gates. That you are here is a sign of dominion. It's not a sign of the absence of darkness. It's a sign of the prevailing power of God over them. There are many lives here that have been buffeted by darkness. I talk to people all the time and I minister, I minister all the time. And I watch with shock the way Satan prevails cheaply over the lives of people. There are doors that will never open until power opens them. When Moses went to Pharaoh, there was very little conversation. When the conversations were done, it was an encounter of power. Are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? And then I began to pray. I remember when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He never spoke a word to me, but he transferred power. Never spoke one word, but something left him and entered my spirit. He said, the entrance of your word giveth light. 
and understanding unto the simple. I remember when I began to see the miracles and the hand of God. Then I began to see other issues that I could not contend with in the lives of people. And I knew that I had to go back. And that was when I learned that you must consistently contend for spiritual power. Let me tell you something. There is too much noise in the church because there is little power. You will always have to explain and explain and explain. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. He says, but I came to you in the demonstration of the spirit. power, That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Tonight, I want to guide us through a few secrets. My personal spiritual journey. I promise you that if you pay attention to this little exhortation, you will encounter power. Jacob was a man who met with the Lord and he held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. It was an encounter with power. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. And he says, from now henceforth, your name is changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God you have contended with God and prevailed a time must come in a man's life when you'll be tired of the level you are and cry in desperation Lord I need your power and your glory in my life there are gates many of us come from all kinds of regions hear me your personal salvation does not deliver your territory the gates are still there are you getting what I'm saying? There are giants on every mountain. The Bible says, How terrible art thou in your works? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I remember Bishop Oyedeko sharing one time and he said how that the church was not growing. They were fasting. They were praying and doing all they knew to do and it was not growing. And then one time while they gathered with the brethren and they were angry at the situation, he said the Lord asked him to come out and when he stepped out, he saw a dark cloud. And he said, this is the cloud that makes people to misunderstand your ministry. And he commanded the cloud to roll away. And there was an explosion. Let me tell you something. Time does not change anything. It is power that brings change. Time only reveals. It does not change. For 38 years, the man was sitting at Bethesda. But when the power of God came upon his life, It is power that can give you audacity to be able to bring heaven to bear. To be able to bring the realities of the realm of the spirit here and now. It takes power to change an SS genotype to an AA. It takes power to open the door of marriage for a lady that it has been closed. It takes power for a woman without womb to get pregnant. It takes power for someone whose life has been tied forever through the greatness of thy power I made up my mind that I have no ministry if I cannot demonstrate its validity three keys very quickly and then we are going to pray the first secret the Lord taught me before we talk on the keys let me just give us a little preamble 1 John chapter 5 verse 9. Help us media. 1 John 5 verse 19. Very simple but interesting revelation that God gives us there. 1 John 5 verse 19. Can we read it together? It's projected. One, two, read. Can you read it louder? One, two, read. Although we are of God, I'm giving you an information that the whole cosmos
cosmos the social system lieth in wickedness please believe this that the whole world lies in wickedness you don't need to offend anybody the condition to be a victim or a potential victim of the curse that comes upon creation is that you are born of a woman for as long as you arrive here safely from birth until you transit there is a potential for disaster it takes power to reign it says rule thou in the midst of your enemies rule thou pastors hear me if your ministry must move from where it is you can have all the connection in the world it takes spiritual power hallelujah it takes power for anything to happen in this life the first key to spiritual power is consecration write it down don't trivialize what i'm sharing if you want to see the power and the anointing of the spirit upon your life the first key is not praying in tongues the first key is a life of consecration what does it mean to be consecrated it means to be yielded it means to be aligned it means to be separated unto god consecration is a reflection of your submission a dedication that you have given your whole self spirit soul and body you have laid down your will I see so many people who want power but they still own their wills let me tell you something if it is true spiritual power you want to see in your life your will must die your personal will your ambition you must be willing to lay it aside if you want power with God you cannot take the power of God and fulfill your own agenda you must die to your agenda are you getting blessed spiritual power is not a gift make no mistakes about it not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards consecration the price of yieldedness the centurion when jesus came he made a statement he said for i am a man under authority and on the strength of my submission to an authority i can tell one go and he will go i can tell one come and jesus looked at him a roman citizen with such an understanding of the kingdom forget about spiritual power when your will is still alive you want to run your life by your own terms by your own way so many pastors are doing their ministry they are church so many businessmen are doing their business until it becomes god's own forget about power dedication consecration i'll never forget one time when i was praying it was it, it's not a doctrine it's my personal i had to i was praying and i had to stand before god lay down i stood naked from head to toe and I say, Lord, I'm dedicated by this prophetic act. My spirit, my soul, and my body. Let this mortal body become a superconductor of your anointing. I give it to you. I have no ambition of my own. My entire life is around the circumference of his will. You want to see the power of God upon your life? You must come to a point where you die to your will. Do not think God will give you power to do your thing. No. It will have to be at his terms. That's what was happening to Jacob. He touched his tie and made him everly dependent on an authority other than himself. There are so many people who are not consecrated to God. It takes dedication. 
It takes total surrender. That's the word. Surrender. Surrender. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. You gave your everything. I give my everything Take all of me All of me Lord This is the key This is what I did with my life Lord Take everything Take my ambition Take my destiny Take everything that means life to me I surrender it to you And God says if you can Give me everything he says, for because you did not withhold your son. That was the key. Consecration is not just about religious rituals. It's about a state of surrender. A state where you know that he becomes your life. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the body, the flesh, I live by the faith of the son. Are you willing to give up everything? The problem is many of us are not willing to give up everything. Because we have been able to educate ourselves falsely. That every time you surrender all to God, he makes you a failure. Every time you give up to God, he, he, will, he will destroy your life. But he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. If it is your business, get set to die. If it is your marriage, get set for the pressure to kill you. If they are your children, get set to kill yourself raising them. But when it becomes his own. This song that we sing, they all belong to you. Even the air that we breathe. It all belongs to you, belongs to you, belongs to you. That's the anthem of my life. There's nothing in my life that belongs to Joshua Selman. It belongs to you. Listen, I have transferred every responsibility to him. I will play my part. But it belongs to him. My life is not my own. I have no ambition of myself. My breath belongs to him. My strength belongs to him. This is the first secret of spiritual power. Consecration. That life of surrender. Believe me. So many men of God run around with dots of oil. Looking for anybody that is anointed. And they kneel down with their carnality and flesh. You can soak yourself inside one jerry can of anointing oil. You will only get up littered with oil. But you will not touch power with God. You want power with God. The first secret is surrender. I'm not talking of born again. I'm talking of him taking everything. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was speaking to the church, but he was still crying for intimacy. Number two, the second secret of spiritual power is revelation and insight. Revelation and insight. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Let's look at verse 18. 
Paul the apostle prayed a prayer to the church in Ephesus. And he made an interesting statement. Help us please. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. He says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, flooded with light. Then he says that ye may know. When the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light, you know. You come into oneness with a reality. It doesn't just mean to be aware. It's not talking of awareness. It's talking of a state of oneness where you and that reality have become one. He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or imagine but all of that is limited to the power that works within us. Light and illumination. When light breaks open over your spirit, please hear me. When illumination breaks open, authority is given to you in the spirit. One time I was in a vision. I've shared it here a number of times. And while I was in a vision, I saw a big door, giant gate, and when I looked closely, it was zoomed to me, and I looked at it closely, and I found out that that big door was made of smaller doors, and on every door, there was a scriptural inscription on it. I saw the doors opening and closing, and every time they opened light, like an arrow would just shoot out of it, and then the Lord began to reveal to me, that this is what happens when people catch a revelation of a dimension of truth the light the power the anointing to demonstrate its validity is released upon them meaning when you teach a thing you cannot demonstrate you have not caught the light yet no matter how you pretend it illumination illumination this is part of the benefit of prayer that when you pray, capacity is given to you in the spirit. It's like a, a, an elevation in the spirit that tilts you in a position where you are able to see clearer. And on the strength of that illumination, you will walk. Hallelujah. There are so many people groping around. Dominion, I've said it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. You don't receive an impartation called dominion. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the laws and the mysteries of the kingdom. The scripture Pastor Alpha shared in Job 38, he was trying to quote it. Verse 33, he says, Knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Do you know the laws that govern the realm of the spirit? And can you establish their dominion? There is something that if you know right now, the door that has been closed over you will open. There is an access to light. There is something when a pastor knows, increase becomes unlimited. There is something when a man of God knows, his life becomes a mystery. Every man, functions according to the measure of light that is accessible to him the bible says you will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light has come not when you are tired of sitting arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you let me tell you a little secret especially if you are in ministry there is a level of spiritual illumination that begins to rise from your life and your ministry it starts attracting a kind of people first it will attract gentiles kings will not come yet kings don't come to your life they come to the brightness so there is a degree of illumination you have that will begin to bring certain people but as the light keeps getting brighter it will begin to compel certain kinds of people light illumination 
I'm not just talking of Bible study. I'm talking about access to the mysteries of the kingdom. He says, call on to me. And that's why we are praying tonight. Because we need access to light. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. He says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are things we do not know. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants. Not everything is accessible to everyone. When Saul and his men watch this. Uh, was it Saul or David now? I can't get the story quite clearly. But when they were returning back, they were tired and hungry. And they went to the priest and asked. They said, we want bread. Here's what the priest said. They said he said, there is no ordinary bread. The common bread is finished. But there is a hallowed bread. There are deeper things in the spirit. Weightier dimensions of illumination. That can turn a man to become like a spirit. But it happens when you call upon him. He says, call unto me. When the king wanted to destroy Daniel and all his friends, he said, let the king not be hasty in this. I will bring the king a right answer. He went back and called upon him and his eyes were open. He says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The next dimension of our life and destinies are at the mercy of spiritual secrets and mysteries this ministry by the grace of god is revolving around mysteries spiritual mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation it's a spiritual code of operation that only takes the agency of the holy ghost for you to understand its operation and it says it has been given unto you to know there is a mystery that will command dominion in your family. That all those powers of darkness that attempt to tie people's destinies down. Illumination. Number three. The third key to walking in spiritual power is being and remaining full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. There are different measures and dimensions of the Holy Spirit that can find expression in people. But if you want spiritual power in your life, let me tell you there is no laziness. You must be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Satan, come to me and does not find anything of himself. It was, it was Stephen. While he was about to be stoned, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost and power to a point that his face was like that of an angel. In Bible time, the condition to be a worker in the welfare department is that you are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. That was a requirement. To serve tables, you must be full of the Holy Ghost. There are so many believers who are not full of the Holy Ghost. That's why we carry our emptiness and we keep embarrassing ourselves. And there is one spiritual key to being full of the Holy Ghost. Prayer. Prayer. The ministry of prayer with fasting. It's the key. Spiritual key. That's why we must pray. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, Brothers and sisters, there is an energy that is generated within you. Every yoke, is, the Bible gives us a picture. It's like an expansion that is happening. There is a level that expansion gets. It breaks every chain at once. At once. Full of the Holy Ghost. That's the level that we must contend. That you pray to a point where you become full of the Spirit. And certain things will happen to you the moment you are full of the Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine. 
wearing in excess he says but be ye filled with the holy ghost if you are truly filled naturally certain things will start you will start speaking not by your mental ascent you are speaking as a response because when when you are full of anything whatever spirit or agency fills you up begins to live out its nature through you manifesting its characteristics through you that's how people become superhuman they are full of the holy ghost to a point that they become puppets their voice is the voice of the spirit their hands have become the hands of the holy ghost so when they tell you god bless you they speak on the strength of the agency the only way to communicate being full of the holy spirit is being drunk when a man drinks to stupor there is a level to which he drinks and that that alcohol influences his mind and his faculty and momentarily he loses consciousness at that point he will say things and do things that are a direct influence of that alcohol when you become full of the holy spirit then the spirit of prophecy will fall on you and you will begin to speak and call things that be not let me tell you something the correct order of dominion prayers is to pray in tongues until you are full before you begin to prophesy you don't just stand up and start saying in jesus name gates open no there is a dimension you stretch in the spirit it's like an escape velocity when you get there the spirit of prophecy comes upon you and you begin to make decrees and i trust god that we'll get to that dimension tonight That is the level where you can call things that be not as though they were. That is the level where the anointing will shatter every yoke when you are full of the Holy Spirit. But when that power is at work in your life, it begins to activate possibilities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. It takes power for the gate of your destiny to be opened. Every one of us here is on our way to destiny. But it takes power. Otherwise, the gates will not open. Tonight, hear me. You are going to stand and pray until the chains that lock up the gate of your destiny give way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm preparing our hearts because we are going to pray. The devil must give up on you. You must pray until that spirit of barrenness jumps out of your life. You must pray until the chains that are tying down your life go. You must pray. There is a way you can pray yourself to victory. It's like a flight in the spirit. You keep praying. When the flesh is tired, you say, no way. When you keep ascending, you will get to a point in the spirit where you would have touched reality. Brothers and sisters, you will never come back again. It's an escape velocity in the spirit. And then you wake up and all of a sudden you see doors opening. Don't wait until a word of knowledge is given or a prophecy. Tonight we are praying ourselves to destiny. We are kings and priests. We will take on the priestly role first. We will stretch in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any man afflicted? let him pray not let him discuss not let him complain is any man challenged by gates are there doors that have refused to open let him pray is any man jobless and you've done your applications and doors are not open pray your way to victory terminal diseases is because they have an occasion to lead to your flesh when you generate power in the spirit when you generate fire in the spirit it burns every chaff does any man desire to see signs and wonders and miracles in your ministry and in your life
anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power let me repeat it anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power you can pray your way to victory in the spirit you can pray your way to favor and breakthrough you can pray your way and smash those doors he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder it takes prayer when the apostles were caught and james was beheaded it pleased herod the people were happy and they bound peter they were about to kill peter and the church said no way and they began to pray prayer authorizes heaven to step in in your affairs when you pray you authorize heaven when you pray you activate the ministry of angels when you pray you begin the work of creation creation did not stop on the seventh day god only rested those who can access the power and the light tonight i want you to be angry with the things that have been happening in your life some of us are like a battery we have gone down spiritually you must pray yourself to fullness there are so many men of god who do not pray and they stand and do all kinds of gymnastics let me tell you something nothing in your life will cover for the absence of prayer when a man is not a prayer man it shows there is there is a touch of eternity upon you when you're a man of prayer for elijah was a man of like passion and he used prayer to lock the gates over a city he did not use a discussion with ahab prayer he locked the gate and kept the keys in his pocket he said that gate will not be opened except at my word tonight you can pray yourself to victory inside and outside and all around there are families that have come tonight people have traveled from far and near it's time to pray yourself to victory pray yourself to victory until you are full of the holy ghost the key of consecration the key of illumination the key of prayer being full of the Holy Ghost you become a bank of spiritual power hear me let me say this especially this seems to work only for men of God it may not be applicable for other people but let me give pastors a secret the day power comes to your life poverty has died forever I guarantee you I, the day power comes upon your life genuine spiritual power not nonsense that people are doing around the day power comes you have gotten something that is worth it i was teaching the school of ministry students and i told them that if not for anything when you find the anointing you have found what is more than gold we trivialize the anointing hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference Oh God, you are my God. Early, like we are doing, will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. I want to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, do you have this in the trim audio? They don't have it. There will be different sessions and I'm going to be leading the sessions. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying in tongues for one hour at a stretch non-stop. After that, when the spirit of prophecy is upon you, there is an anointing who anoint us and all of that and then we can minister to people but we need to pray. Do you have it? Are you ready with it? Okay, so quickly everyone is going to participate we are going to pray it takes prayer it takes prayer everyone say it takes prayer to command victories say it takes prayer that's what a vigil is 
a vigil is not a time to sip tea and take lemon juice and, and banana cake. You are joking. A vigil is a time to tell the devil, Christ has won this. I come to establish my victory. Listen, the breakthroughs that will arise from this prayer session will surprise many of you. You never know how cheap Satan is until you are a man of prayer. You never know how cheap doors can be. How cheap they can open. Pray. Pray. When you pray in the secret, then you make your life easy in the open. But when you do not pray, many of us pray, but we pray amiss. Tonight I want to teach you strategies, deep strategies for spiritual prayer that will produce results that you are talking does not mean you are praying there are many people who are talking for a long time and they leave that place with the same misery and frustration there, is, there are dimensions and laws and there are rules of engagement I don't know about you but part of my request I told God I must step into new levels of grace in this vigil shortly before I came here I lay down flat before the Lord and I said, Lord, my personal desire, I know you will use me to touch and bless your people. But whilst that is happening, I hold on to your garment. There is a new level. I saw in a vision a curtain open and there was another one and I was pushed forward. I said, that's it. I must pray till what I have seen. Many of you have seen things in your dream. Prayer is the weapon that you use to bring it to pass. You have seen a great life. You have seen a prosperous destiny. But there are gates. Make no mistakes about it. Your business will not just excel. There are gates. Sister, the marriage will not just happen. There are gates. But tonight, ministries and destinies will rise to a new level. Please, I'm saying this so that you will prepare your spirit your spirit rise up everybody inside and outside please rise up the first prayer point is a cry for grace call it the spirit of prayer and supplication lift your voice and pray Lord release upon me the spirit of prayer and supplication Just pray. Please, everybody, rise. Rise, rise, rise. Stand on your feet. You came to pray. Do this for the sake of your destiny. Will you open up the gate? up the doors will you open up the gate open up the doors open up the gate Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and pray in one minute before we start praying properly. Say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Lift your voice and pray. Take everything inside and outside, right to the back. Lord, I've tried to live my life my own way. I surrender everything. I surrender my will. 
my ambition I surrender everything it belongs to you pray total surrender Lord, it belongs to you. The bread is yours. The gift is yours. The business is yours. The ministry is yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Media, are you ready? Please let me know when you are ready. You are ready? Now, hallelujah. Dr. Cindy Trim is a woman of prayer. Cindy Trim is a woman with a strong prophetic grace for prayer. And we are going to be using her one hour prophetic declaration. She makes prophetic declarations. It's an audio while that is happening until it finishes is a guide the moment it starts we are stretching in the spirit no sleeping anyone who is sleeping hold his hands and walk around with them no sleeping praise the lord because this is about your destiny outside make sure you participate whatever you do be ready to stretch it in the spirit and i want you to imagine yourself ascending a ladder in the spirit where you are tearing down the walls of limitation. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hands over your people and I ask for a supply of grace to pray. Grace to pray. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon you. Let the capacity, the capacity to stretch in the spirit. It cannot be by your efforts. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Praise the Lord. Lift your voice, everybody. Begin to pray in the spirit. Pray like a priest. Only in the spirit. Only in the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues. For as a prince. As a prince. This is not just your normal prayer life. I know, I know normally you pray. You are under a heavy unction. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. your Bibles please Psalm 92 Psalm 92 We're entering another phase. Verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I want us to read it together. 
want to read. One more time. Horn is a symbol of authority. Horn is a symbol of power. The anointing was usually put in a ram's horn. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Just like the horn of a unicorn is always above. You will exalt my horn. It says, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Listen. The Lord asked me to do this before we begin to minister to the sick and all of that. This is ordinary oil. But there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon this. And this loses its earthly significance. And takes on a heavenly significance. This is an anointing that is coming upon you to bring freshness to your life. This is an anointing that is coming upon your life to bring remarkable breakthroughs. I saw this when I was praying in a vision and that's why I'm just doing this. We're going to be very fast because there are still many other things to do. I'm going to pray on this and we'll put it in this plate. And the ministers will help will just spread it around when they pass it to you just dab your hand and put it on your forehead and begin to blast in tongues when everyone is done then we we'll begin with the ministrations father in the name of jesus christ can you open them for me? this is ordinary oil but by the power of the holy spirit I declare that beginning from tonight they carry the anointing of the spirit many of you as you partake of this fresh fire comes upon your life freshness listen tonight is a night of encounter with power hallelujah it's a night of encounter with power. Father, I lay my hands upon this. In a name that is above all names. May they become conduits of your power. May they become instruments of power. As this comes upon the heads of many. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That they will bring supernatural breakthroughs, supernatural freshness, supernatural grace. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, as this oil comes upon me, something must break loose in my destiny are you praying as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you still praying lord i'm tired of stagnation i'm tired of hardship Lord, my heart is open. New dimension. New dimension of fire. New dimension of illumination. New dimension of victory. New dimension of grace. Don't, don't start applying it yet. We 
are tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than me There's gotta be more than me Hallelujah. Now listen, please, I want you to know that this is not an ordinary oil. It has the power of God. What you do is just pass it to the first person. You just touch it and then begin to make declarations and prophecies. We'll do that very quickly so that we'll finish up because there are, there are still some other sessions and our time is already gone. Hallelujah. It's got to be more, got to be more. Father, let there be all kinds of miracles and breakthroughs as your people encounter this oil in the name of Jesus Christ go ahead just tap it lay it on your head and begin to blast in tongues go ahead everybody you can put it on your hands if you want to but go ahead quickly quickly just pass it round, pass it round quickly. Make sure there's enough outside, please. Let everybody get it. Everybody. Go ahead and pray. Make decrees. Make decrees. Believe what you are doing, make decrees. Bible says, Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Those outside, are they do they have the oil? Please let's save time very quickly outside. Make sure your speaking my life will never be the same. Please rise up everybody. Let's pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to visit you and speak to your situation. Go ahead, please pray. hallelujah 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 praise the lord where is the man that was here kneeling with a child hallelujah the lord is showing me a family that came here a family that came here I think this, this has to do with sickness. This is a family. Is it that you brought somebody or I'm seeing sickness and infirmity? Please quickly, let's save time. We have, we still have a lot. Hallelujah. Stand up, sir. Where is your wife? Because I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft and I'm seeing oppression in your life. I don't know you, I don't know if this is your first time coming here, but the Lord wants to bring a visitation to your life. Please believe me. The Lord wants to bring you a visitation. Memuna, I'm hearing the name Memuna. Memuna, I'm hearing a name. I don't know if that's someone's name or that's someone's name. I'm hearing the name Memuna. The Lord is ministering to me. 
I don't have to call your case, believe me. The atmosphere that we're in is enough to bring us that breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hearing that name, Nehemuna, I'm going to pray for you. Is your wife sleeping? Please let her come. I just want to minister to both of you. She can return back to the car. Nehemuna. Mommy, where is the woman with a prayer house? That mommy. Please make your way to the front. The Lord is saying I should minister to you fresh grace. Quickly, quickly, please. Where is that person? this young boy what is this that I'm seeing I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing snakes all over him this is what I'm seeing it came from you to him please collect this child let me minister to this woman please don't bring anybody out until I tell you to bring them out why are they here Memuna is that your name help us with a mic please huh This little girl, how can such a little girl be so oppressed? You're sleeping, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this oppression leave this lady now, mommy. I'm going to pray for you. You are stepping into a new level of the prophetic, your eyes will be opened in a strange way, in a very, very strange way. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing close to you, I'm pouring like oil. This is what I see happening to you. Like oil being poured upon you. And the Lord says, I should tell you, you are stepping into another dimension. A strange dimension of grace. Lord, make this happen by your grace. A strange order and a strange dimension of grace. Madam, where are you from? Madam, where are you from? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing serious oppression. An attack is not just on your baby this thing you are the one who really needs to be free not even the baby you get the point but you have calm down now madam let me talk to you I'm seeing you in the spirit there's no mic okay that's all right I'm looking at this madam in the spirit and I'm seeing you fatter than this I'm seeing what happened. You were sick. Even now. I don't even know that I'll come out. This is what I'm telling you because I'm looking at you in the spirit and the weight I'm seeing is not the same with what I'm seeing right now. That's why I told you it's not the issue of your child. What is happening is simply translating from you to the child. Come, sir. You and your lovely wife. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Do you believe, madam? you believe that where do you walk are you walking where sterling bank it won't be too long god is going to take you from that place you know this now you have been preparing towards yes no, not true uh, because i'm looking at you and i'm seeing a referee like a you know when it's almost time in a football match this is what i'm seeing your time there is almost up and god is going to lift you i prophesy it in the name of jesus christ and i'm declaring that let this happen in the name of jesus christ there is need to pray for your child um, i'm looking at this child and i'm seeing something like symptoms of fever temperature we have to pray for him father in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit everything that is not of god upon this child i take authority over it in jesus name 
Madam, the Lord says I should tell you that He's bringing you into a season of favor. Please, I want you to believe me. I don't just talk if God has not told me anything. Do you believe? Father, bring this family into tremendous realms of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Why am I seeing Memuna on your head? Are you Memuna? That's your name. Come. You too, you are Memuna. I'm seeing a name written on her head and I'm seeing Memuna. Is that your name or is the name of someone? And I will restore. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He can restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Huh? Two things. Number one, your relationship with God. Huh? You can't be one leg in and one leg out. You get what I'm saying, right? Leave all those friends and focus. Use this night. Let this be a night of determination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let her be free. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause sickness. I cause infirmity. I'm going to pray for the sick. But then I cause sickness from your body in the name of Jesus. And every act of witchcraft, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. I lay my hands upon this baby. What's the name? What's your child's name? Madam, what's your child's name? Destiny. I lay my hands upon destiny and I speak to you. Be made whole right now from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, be prayerful. Yeah? Be prayerful. There are some things I cannot show here, but you see, let me speak in parables. You cannot come and collect my thing and pretend not to know me. Are you getting what I'm saying? You cannot come and collect my thing in the secret and stand in the secret pretending not to know me. It's very important. Be prayerful and he's either Lord of all. He cannot share his glory with any other people. You get what I'm saying, madam? The Lord is going to lift you and tell you, please, I want to pray for your children because the devil wants to oppress them. This is your child. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, Spirit, let her go now. Out by the power of the Holy Spirit, Madam. I pray for you. I'm seeing three babies. There are some women here. I'm seeing a woman, particularly, who came here specifically for the issue of fruit of the womb. Please, who is that person? I'm, no, you are not standing for anybody, you came for yourself. Who is that person? Let me just minister to the person very quickly. Please, let's save time fruit of the womb because the lord is showing me i just had the cry three babies congratulations madam where is she your name is glorious we lift you up higher There's somebody here. You are here with five broad. Right now as I'm talking. Great wisdom for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, I see the healing angels. Stepping into this place. We we'll begin to minister to the sick proper now. I don't know why God does it. But he's going to do it again in a strange way. The anointing of God is going to come upon a lady. And she's going to shout. That loud shout will usher in the coming of the healing anointing. Please don't ask me why this thing happened. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. If you're sick in your body, please make your way to the front right now. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Everyone begin to pray, Lord, touch me. Please, if you're sick, just, just give them way. We're going to minister to them very quickly. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed.
That's the end of it, my dear. That devil leaves you forever. Never to return. Never to return. Listen. I want you to know that Jesus heals here. We have a track record. By the grace and the mercies of God. I'm going to minister to you very quickly. So that we can speak specifically. Please make your way to the front. Just organize yourself. And um, bring the lady. Where's the lady under the anointing? Case here. I know. Eh? Look at. Let me just calm down. I'm seeing something very funny and interesting here. Watch this. This woman, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a corpse. I'm seeing somebody they have already buried. You see her? This woman is almost quarter to go. I mean, it's not clear there, but there's almost nothing here. Bones. Watch this. Um, the spirit that wants to kill this woman is in her son. This boy standing. It's not like it's the boy that wants to kill her. So they went to consult with somebody. Eh? They went to consult with somebody. This person is like a herbalist. And he told them this is the boy that wants to kill the mother. He got it wrong because his understanding is limited. It's not like the boy wants to kill her. But the spirit at work in him is what is tying her. Both of them. This is the spirit of death. She would have died on the 22nd of this month. 22nd. She would have buried her. It would have been over. She would have stopped talking from 19th and died on the 22nd. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is He's awesome in power. Come on, sing it like victorious people. Our God. To voice and say, Our God is greater. Hey. Our God is stronger. Father, in the name of Jesus, I set this boy free from witchcraft by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause that spirit that is responsible to me. Who speaks out now? Mama? Kiberta? Leave her. Yeah, Kiberta. Bata Fadiba. She looks like a full of human. She understands how sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect her. I curse this spirit. I take her out of these dungeons of death. Right now. belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god hallelujah the last and greatest session of this meeting is where i begin to prophesy that's where people receive guest breakthroughs and testimonies we may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but i want you to know that god is going to bless you peter adola is going to come up and for the next 10 minutes or so he's going to lead us through a dimension of worship and praise unto god and the moment that happens i will come back and we'll take up the last session with prophecy and then we'll take a few announcements we are done everybody give jesus praise as we celebrate him
worship you, Jesus. Celebrate you, Jesus. Which one? Which are the pianos? This one. I think this one. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we 
You are the most I God. God, that we worship you. You are the most high. You are the most high God. We worship. God, that we worship you. We worship. You are the most high God. We worship. God, that we worship. Say we worship. You are the most high we worship with our hands lifted up we worship with our hands lifted up we worship when we lift up our hands it's to you Jesus oh, oh with our hands lifted up we worship you Jesus we worship yes we worship Jesus the King of Glory, the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundations of the earth. We worship you, Jesus. Yeah. Desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Say I'm lost without you. Say it. I am lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. There's no me without you. There's no me without you. Say it. No me without you. There's no life without you. There's no life without you. Oh. Lord, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I need a turn. I'm desperate for. Oh. I'm desperate for you. Desperate for you, Jesus. I can breathe without you. I'm lost without you, Shane. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you, Shane. I'm lost without you. Church, say, I'm lost without you now. Say, I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I am lost without you. Cover us with your grace, Jesus. <laughs> Say, I'm lost without you. Let it rain on your presence, oh God. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. We give you all the glory and the honor and adoration to your holy name. Yes, I'm lost without your name, oh God. I'm lost without you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, say break every chain, break every chain. Woo! 
With the lifting up of our hands to you, so we worship. With our hearts open wide to you, oh, we worship. Hallelujah to your name. Amen, amen, the song join me and say you have a one say hallelujah as the highest prayer oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh, the chorus here Just leave him there. It's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have a few minutes and then we're done. I salute everyone. We'll have the last prayer session and then I'll just prophesy and speak over our lives. So can we all rise inside and outside? I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. 
I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and lives and is to come, I will sing before His throne Your holy, holy, yes, you are holy, holy. Hallelujah, mighty one. Psalm 66, verse 3, please. Our last prayer session. We're going to be praying. And we are going to be making decrees and commanding our lives and destinies. He told Job, has thou commanded thy money? Or are you just allowing it to happen? Believers have authority, but we must put the authority to use. And then we compel these powers to submit. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. I want you to believe in the prayer session we're about to have right now. Very brief, but very impactful. And I want you to pray and pray like your heart depends on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, when Moses began to advocate the release of the nation of Israel, God's covenant people, into their promised land. When the pressure got so much, Pharaoh negotiated. He said, alright, let we have a deal. The men can go, leave the women and the children. Leave the factors that represent the continuity of that race. The women and the children. Let the men go. Because he knew they would perish. And Moses said, no way. We are going with our wives, our children, our cattle, and everything. So we are going to pray. The Bible says, Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And it says God had blessed him in all things. Not some things. All things. It's, it's possible for you to experience breakthrough and advancement in one area of your life. But then you are tied in another area. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us about a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a great man. He did exploits, fought valiantly, but he was leprous. So we want to address those buts, those situations in our lives. Yes, you have done well, you are anointed. Yes, this and that, but there are certain areas. It must be total victory. Rise up on your feet. I want you to shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come against every power. That attempts to fight my destiny. In the name of Jesus. I declare release. Of every other area of my life. That is under attack. And I declare this morning that it is my time for breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, 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 people of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Mention the areas in your life that are pending, that need the breakthrough hand of God. Mention those areas specifically. Please lift your voice and pray. Take this session seriously. We're almost done. Rapakato proso so predege de bela de bosh. Embratakata balata poko soto pregate. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for every area of your life that is yet to experience breakthrough. Decree and declare that after this vigil, you will begin to experience breakthrough in that area. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we ward off the powers of hell. 
standing against our lives and destinies. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While still praying, when Moses finally convinced Pharaoh to release them, watch this. As they released them, while they were going, the Bible says they met a Red Sea. So they had left Egypt, but there was a Red Sea in front of them. Are we together now? And the Egyptians were back to capture them. And they began to cry. And in Exodus chapter 14, Moses said, stand still. Stand still. He says, the Egyptians you see today, oh, you may have seen them for 430 years, but today, the Egyptians you see today, he says that you would not see them. And then he said, Moses, verse 15 now, Moses was crying before God. And he said, why will you cry? Tell the people to move forward. Make advancement. Listen, this prayer we are going to pray is important. Because many of us, this prayer will supply courage. Hear me? It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward in business. It's time to move forward in your career. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray and say, Lord, everything keeping me down. Maybe it's the failure of the past. Maybe it's the lies of Satan. He has lied to you. Maybe you are fallen again. You entered a relationship. It did not work. You have refused to enter another one to get married. You did business and it did not work. And the devil is stopping you from moving forward. You, you tried to give birth and you had a miscarriage. But right now, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs do not go before you. They follow you. When you take the step of faith, God is ministering to someone. It's time to get back. The anointing is still there. Where you fell is where you will rise and excel. The anointing is still there. Lift your voice and prophesy. I'm moving forward. Go ahead and pray. Pray. In my ministry, I'm moving forward. I refuse to allow challenges and limitations stop me. Inside and outside, I'm moving forward in every area of my life. You wanted to start a building project. A challenge came and you have refused to move forward. You tried to get admission. You tried once, twice. It didn't work. Listen. It says, tell the people to move forward. Koinonia, I announce to you an anointing by an encounter with power is upon your life to begin to move forward. Now prophesy. Lord, I'm moving forward. I break those barriers. I refuse to see challenges. That project is doable. The project is doable. The marriage is doable. Come on, pray now. The ministry can rise. It's achievable. It's achievable. It's achievable. I may have been thrown down once, but it is achievable. There is still an anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Bible says there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down. Samson was a mighty man of power. But for some reason he was anointed to be the judge over Israel. And for some reasons he fell into the trap of a woman called Delilah. And that trap costed him his eyes. They plucked out his eyes and they shaved him. You would have thought that would be the end of Samson. Once a giant, the one who threatened the Philistines, the one who tore a lion and brought honey out of it, the one who removed a city gate. God is ministering to some people here. You have tasted power and honor, but something happened somewhere and brought you down. But tonight God is speaking to you that there is hope for a tree. 
you can rise again when they took samson and they took him to the temple and they were mocking him before our god he prayed a prayer he prayed a prayer of restoration that lord this one last time let this anointing come upon me and the bible says he pushed he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime can i tell you something you should know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person we live in a generation where every time you fail there are so many people coming to prove to you justifying their prophecies are you getting me now you start a business or a company it fails and everybody tells you you see you start a ministry genuinely called by god no growth there is failure and people tell you stop wasting your time a gentleman gets up and says i'm going to get married and no finances no resources no job and everybody tells him you'll be a failure or maybe a student you went to the board and you saw that you're on probation let me announce to you tonight that it is never over until you choose to give up are you hearing what i'm saying i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes. I will never forget our first crusade. Our first crusade in Joss. You would have rated it maybe a failed crusade because they were not people. They were not much. We saw miracles. We saw mighty things but the people were few. We were stranded. Listen, a crusade would happen the crusade was to start by 5.30. As, as at 3 o'clock, the car was still spoiled. We're still on our way going. I'll never forget. The driver tried and tried and tried. We didn't even have enough money. We just had enough money to take us there. How we were going to survive. Listen. Every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life. It is not that God is limited. It is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized, God can do nothing about it. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. The earth has he given to the sons of men. Elijah knew this, that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men. And he didn't go to beg God. He went and said, I lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens. So I lock it up and I put the key in my pocket. Listen to what he said. There would not be rain except at my word. But the Bible, James, Apostle James, had a revelation of what he did. He said, don't think he just spoke grammar. He went and locked himself and prayed earnestly. He was a man of like passion. But he allowed God. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 please quickly many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role we have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance and I search for a man among them listen who is talking here God to his prophet why will God be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today? I sought for a man among them that should make up what? A hedge, a gap. They have violated something. They invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them. But in my kindness, I'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail 
there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and God keeps watching it ravage you for decades and God is saying I'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise I was until I learned this I was surprised how God would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah, ah, but God can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me Matthew 6 he was teaching them the Beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as I hear you say before my ears so will I do please leave it there I sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so let's see what would happen in 31 Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even Pharaoh and his army slain by the sword said the Lord Ezekiel 22 you're giving us a wrong scripture here that's what I gave you right Ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media Are we there please help help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy the scripture i'm looking for the scripture that therefore have i poured out that is what we just read therefore have i poured out my word indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like i'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become a alt an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen God is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening. There are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world. But he must find a people. That's why men are a serious business to God. Many of us act unassisted. Many pastors act unassisted. The realm of the spirit is available to assist. But until we call. Until we call. Pray in tongues for one minute and say, Lord, I call you. I call you into my life and into my situation. I don't assume you are aware. I authorize you. Shabras kataba segete kalabarosa sibriyasha. Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For 30 years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Every year, someone is dying. Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabras Katako Sibaria Sakatoba Shiva. Ten graduates, no one is employed. Ten ladies, no one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto Sobakai. Lekete kota sabres katoshi paratia. 
everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come another mystery kicks in everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock it happened to my grandmother it happened to my mother now the devil wants it to happen to me hallelujah please sit down listen let me tell you i studied my life i studied my lineage i studied my family and i saw things that i knew were not funny i knew that those things were activations and if i were to answer the call of god upon my life and prevail something must happen An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a higher anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduate, my mother graduate, 10 of us in our family graduate nothing is working it will continue like that because there is something making god look like a wicked person i sought for a man in your family it's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a christian i sought for a man who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders wanting to deliver the nation of israel from egypt imagine how the heart of god bled when he saw the soldiers of pharaoh weeping god's covenant people man who is the man that i will send in ezekiel 37 ezekiel stood before the dry bones i thought god would say bones come back to life he said ezekiel you know this law of territory i can't speak and it will just happen so i will tell you i will speak from heaven to you then you speak now in the earth I prophesied as I was commanded when God spoke the bone did not move when he prophesied as he commanded all of a sudden there was a sound oh God spoke to me in a vision as I had that dream and God said it's over and you get up and just smile you are joking it will never be over it was over in the realm of the spirit what you do with that encounter is to stand up put that word and say I legislate I agree with you lord my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement that's why we have many dreams that never come to pass you see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit you see zero in the physical you see a job in the realm of the spirit you see demotion in the physical god told you his intention in the realm of the spirit your carelessness aborted it in the physical take seriously what i'm saying the same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet and then the day something devastating happens you say hey i saw this thing that's a pain in the heart of god because he he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness when God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They say, God hid this thing from me. Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance.
God gave man dominion over creation it will take man exercising it and prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion the Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet so although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense because before your arrival another altar had been raised and so it will take you enforcing dominion I may come from this family but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened no the same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden in all you're getting get wisdom wisdom is the principal thing through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established join apostle, apostle joshua selman of eternity network, network international as he takes you on a journey, journey into, into the wisdom of god's word it's intimacy it's partnership it's fellowship this is koinonia inside outside let us bless the name of the Lord the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords we honor you we worship you we worship you we worship you Shabbat the Lord sing songs of worship to him let an incense of right of worship rise from within you to the God of all flesh we bow we worship let your name be lifted let our King be lifted oh tonight that your glory will fill this place and we ask tonight that you be enthroned in our lives I pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and 
across different nations of the world different parts of this nation bless lift equip build let there be healings let there be deliverances i pray oh god that your people will experience the fullness of your power in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you you're very welcome please be seated I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online they may not be able to see us but they can hear our clap thank you thank you so much let's honor them thanks to the power of technology hallelujah praise the Lord tonight I want your spirit to be very sensitive I want to it's a prayer meeting we're going to pray tonight but I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly truly empower us you know I I sat back and I was thinking today just thinking of the the topics the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the Lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I taught them something that I think is, is, is good for us to know. I said, um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation. In every dispensation, there is a dimension of the dealings of God that he apportions for that generation to know about him. And it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that he has a portion for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me I am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah Paul said I went up by revelation not by desire I went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory the revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is. It is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided. He will have to work with the vessels 
that are available at any given time are we together now so god can step into a place like zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough and so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are uh, we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring. It becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being. And they are not lying. Because divinity is swallowing you up gradually. And you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit. Like you see someone manifesting under the anointing. Ordinarily, you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed. When you see someone manifesting unusual strength, you know that that is another agency through him. Every time you align in the spirit, you help to advance the purposes of God. Let me tell you something. God is searching for men. He still is searching for men. Never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that god is finding a people no alignment is not something that um is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of God has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious 
proposition that people bring that when you wait in God's presence you are busy people stay in God's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of god the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say i'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory spirit of the living god i have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit i have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let a deposit of eternity be upon me mm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime i have come to eat of the bread of the spirit this is bethel the place where the spirit of god will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down listen it is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes you see sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome you prepare for battle before battle you don't prepare for battle during battle are we together don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth and then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another path and cause your wife to give birth don't wait until they drive you from work and then you now say what is the mystery of favor again no you are too late surround yourself with mysteries like chariots so that when the devil fires his arrow before it gets to you a revelation you have in store will arise the the shield listen that shield is a defense whether you are sleeping or awake you have a bad dream you are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm he shall keep his angels charge over me don't react to things when they come are we together now yes don't wait until the day they tell you oh something happened and you are now panicking no god is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you 
someone comes and meets you and says we're in trouble and you say what happened rain washed our house you say glory be to god don't worry there is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint listen your confidence in life is based on the the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with fear is a product of ignorance you will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation this is the reason for fear you never fear anything you have control over ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives so we don't know whether we are going to live or die we say we don't know whether we'll be rich or poor we don't know whether we'll be successful or failures we don't know whether people will favor us or not god cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear no the antidote to fear is knowledge knowledge so that when your uncle looks at you and says i can't help you again i'm sorry you know how you say uncle thank you thank you for what you have done so far because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above it only comes through men not from men so if one man is not available heaven is still available and he can find another man that revelation alone settles you so you are not jumping around and saying, uncle what can we do that's a foolish and stupid way of speaking it's like going to a filling station all fuel comes from the ground not the filling station so if the filling station packs up we know that there's still fuel in nigeria all you need to do is look for another filling station are we together now may god grant us knowledge see the bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic it's not because you are young or old it's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman it's not because you are living in the north or south uh -uh. it's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence nobody is born with confidence it's a resultant effect of something joy is a product of something that you know fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know hallelujah please sit down i have such passion to see us grow in the spirit so we don't just deceive ourselves and say i'm a spiritual man a spiritual man is not is not something ambiguous there are exact standards that can measure spirituality spirituality is not something that one man hides in a pocket and say i am spiritual no there are clear spiritual standards if they have been met you are spiritual if they have not been met you are not spiritual it's as simple as that hallelujah that's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in week out because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here someone's life is dependent on what is shared here this is an issue of life and death it's not just an issue of a voluntary thing no it says they are alive to those who find them that means those who don't find them can die are we together now life is spiritual that's why the bible says everything listen it says everything that is done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness this is not my teaching but i just felt a need to do that everything in the house of god must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing otherwise it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow god's presence find expression if you are a cleaner in the house of god you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set you can't say i'm not a member of prayer department i'm just a keyboardist this thing this gentleman is playing is not just music if his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem 
the sound that will come out from there will obstruct what god is doing in your spirit he will be playing the same thing and wonder why he's not edifying you because he's playing his secret place amplifying it to people he's not playing music a gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual you will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such carnality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality nobody should serve in the house of god just because he's talented no your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people so we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very very gifted people but all kinds of spiritual obstructions you see someone who hold a mic beautiful voice but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him you love the song but something about the voice there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that that's why we pray that's why we wait in his presence it's not just to increase skill it's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven and everything that is communicated to you even if it is something you have had before it comes with a fresh anointing it comes with a fresh atmosphere and it can cause transformation you are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God no any church anybody that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings capture the presence of God is a cinema it's a complete waste of time so everything must be done under the anointing we have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time be spiritual as an usher you are not just holding people under the anointing you are not just cleaning seats you are spiritual are we together now someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service not just your service the spirituality of it someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching my preaching not just the dispensing of gifts but the spirituality of it that's what can bring the transformation and bring the miracles I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill it's not so much about action but the the fire the passion the presence the glory that backs up what we do that's what produces the results tonight I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer pay attention I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life the altar of prayer I want us to understand the mystery of altars Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling Oh God, take my praise. Oh 
God, take my prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer, when it comes to the issue of warfare, when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm, there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations. That's what I've been seeking to do. To teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit. Because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will. Every other entity needs a system of authorization. Are we together now? altars most people do not know what altars are and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happen on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over 
but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said okay there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said am i my brother's keeper i said ah don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the lord whether in you are sleeping whether you are awake it kicks that reality you will be saved because there is an altar that eternally secures that there are many platforms that god has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something 
God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar. The very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries. The epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon. That throne you see is an altar. It's what makes him the ancient of days. He sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel. Doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious. There is a system that has been designed to ensure order. An altar. Anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer In James chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us James chapter 5 verse 16 I want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray James 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says availed much availed much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. 
I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation. Now was passing that place and the night time came and he felt, look, let me just lie down and sleep. And the Bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep. He didn't pray for an encounter. He didn't beg for an encounter. The moment he slept, the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening. The angels ascending, descending. It was like a, a portal, a ladder, and at the top of it was God himself. And he was surprised. When he woke up, he said, wow, this is a portal. This is the gate of heaven. I saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the jordan and he said elijah asked i'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand there today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call long tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time 
how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of god with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if i practice obedience consistently i have yielded my members to obedience i become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if i steal this handkerchief watch this if i steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if i do it again and i do it again that i don't know i'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally are you learning something Because you see, not all altars were consciously built, but they are still altars. So it is when I say altars that are destroying you, it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say, if you don't tell us what you have done, we will beat you. No, he may be innocent. This is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of god or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience i'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of god has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back to say no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked prophesied morning till night that's an altar when Saul went and met Samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw Samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of several listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar i activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you i didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem 
but an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of God's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship Luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at Matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 It's actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God but he went to spend time all night communing communion give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion it's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity jesus was filled with the holy spirit but never manifested the power of the holy ghost after prayer the bible says he returned not full of the spirit but in the power of the spirit in luke 17 don't turn there john 17 sorry jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication if you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying 
you would think it's just um i'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear god is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and God there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of God is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you god must know how to reach you on serious informations god must know how to reach you on trivial informations he must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit that place of training is the secret place i will never trade anything for my time with him that's where men are built that's where there is an exchange see let me tell you holding a mic and teaching is not difficult holding a mic and preaching is not difficult but communicating life that one is a derivative of your altar that's why we sleep in church that's why our churches are full of dry bones from the preacher to those listening all dry bones people stand and talk they say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you because there's no altar they are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit number two quickly why do we need the altar of prayer prayer creates a legal platform for god prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access prayer creates a legal platform mark the word legal it has to be legal the realm of the spirit is a legal realm the dealings of god with men are on legal grounds that's why god could not just pronounce men justified the system had to be followed to the latter prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally i know that many of you are surprised why should god almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that i think will bless you psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of christ psalms 115 and verse 16 then give us ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31 psalms 115 verse 116 can we read it together one to read the heaven even the heavens other versions say the heaven of heavens are the lord's read on 
but the earth as a territory has he given to where watch this let me give you a little explanation if if a jimmy has a house are we together and he decides to rent that house to me now it is true that it is still his house but does he have a right to just enter anytime again no even if he comes to that house although it is your house but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you so even as the landlord you will still knock and i have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy and you will still go so god is still the lord of all creation but he carved out a domain of his kingdom apportioned it to man and it became scripturally incorrect for god to come to the earth without a man permitting him that's why the holy spirit had to move michael gabriel to come and ask for permission from mary before jesus entered her womb mary could not just see her womb no 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 it was a discussion this is what we want to do can your womb be available the word was the permission be it unto me i authorize you how shall these things be don't worry about the dynamics your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding be it unto me and he had to go to joseph and say joseph you are about to see something strange in your wife now i know that is going to shock you but please 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 don't drive her there is a mystery she's carrying and joseph calm down look at how god had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission permission one by one while he was doing that he was breathing upon anna the prophetess to keep praying breathing on simeon in the temple to keep praying john the baptist who will baptize and ordain jesus his father wanted to play with redemption he thought he was just playing with a sacrifice an angel appears to him and says mr man your wife is going to have a child the name is john and he, met, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said no 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 this guy would disallow or shut his mouth he's a priest meaning there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys it can disallow and allow realities so he said shut his mouth this this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing and they shut his mouth not as wickedness as a strategy to make sure john arrives so that jesus will be commissioned when john was born they said what shall we name him the wife said john they said no we've not had this name then they went to the dumb father now mr man what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel what did you hear and he wrote on the book john is that a prayer and his mouth opened god said now you can say anything you want to say you have authorized heaven now watch this look how hard it is for god to find expression in the earth he must go around that's why i taught you about the gift of men god cannot be the author of death knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him for 430 years god was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer not if he promised abraham captivity for 400 years but even god became limited for 30 extra years until moses was trained are you blessed john the baptist found himself in the wilderness the requirement to ordain jesus he ate locusts and wild honey had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized jesus christ and that was all and jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that god is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized god can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the earth has he given to the sons of men elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg god 
he went and said i lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so i lock it up and i put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word but the bible james apostle james had a revelation of what he did he said don't think he just spoke grammar he went and locked himself and prayed earnestly he was a man of like passion but he allowed god ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 please quickly many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role we have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance and i search for a man among them listen who is talking here god to his prophet why will god be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today i sought for a man among them that should make up what a hedge a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness i'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain